All right, now let's look at how we can calculate the average power dissipation for any type of load or any type of circuit. And in this case, I've got a circuit where part of the circuit I'm representing as a Thevenin equivalent circuit with a source and a resistance. And then I've got a load. And in this time, the load is not just a single element. The load is actually composed of three elements, an inductor, a capacitor, and a resistor. And so the question is, what is the average power of this load? <coughs> All right, so looking at this, we know that in rectangular form, this will be 150 volts. So let's consider how we're going to solve this. Now, we remember that for a resistor, P is equal to VMIM over 2 or equal to VM squared over 2R or equal to IM squared over 2 times R. And so we have all these alternate definitions that come out of us applying this strictly, of course, to resistors. So we looked at those definitions before. But let's consider what this means. We note that a voltage vector, or pardon me, a voltage phasor, is just Vm at a phase angle of theta sub v degrees. And a current phasor is Im at a phase angle of theta sub i degrees. And so these are the definitions of a phasor. So Vm and Im are really just the magnitudes of these phasors. So therefore, the magnitude of V is Vm, and the magnitude of I is equal to Im. So really, I can rewrite this resistor equation. where the real or average power of a resistor is therefore equal to the magnitude of the phasor squared, voltage phasor squared divided by 2R, or equal to the magnitude of the current phasor squared divided by 2 times R, where V and I are the voltage and current phasor for the resistor. So all we have to do in order to calculate the average power of a resistor is find the phasor voltage across it or the phasor current flowing through it. Take the magnitude, square it, divide by 2, and then plug it into one of those two formulas. So given that, let's now calculate the average power of this load. Now I have to conclude the average power of all of the elements if I'm going to calculate this. I have to do, do it for each of them. But what is the average power of an inductor? Zero. What's the average power of a capacitor? Zero. By definition, we know this to be true. And so we can begin by noting that P is equal to zero for any inductor or capacitor. So that's easy. So I only need the power of the resistor. All right? So the power of the load in this particular case must be equal to the power of the 100 ohm resistor. All right? 
Let's go ahead and let's calculate the voltage and current associated with this resistor. How do we do that? Just by using standard phasor analysis. If we look at this, I have two impedances in parallel and these two impedances I can combine in series. So when you think about it, I can calculate VR, the voltage phasor across that resistor, just by using voltage division. And so in this case, by voltage division, VR will be equal to 100 in parallel with minus J75 divided by 50 plus J250 plus 100 in parallel with minus J75 multiplied times 150. I could do this nodally, of course. I could write an equation at this node and then calculate VR that way. But in this case, I'm just applying, uh, just applying voltage division, which of course is derived from nodal analysis. But if I go ahead and take this, calculate the value of this, and I'm going to skip that over. That's just something you can plug into your calculator or into Mathematica. But if I calculate this, what I'm going to get is VR is equal to minus 20.54 minus J 35.48 volts, which in rectangular form, pardon me, in polar form, excuse me, is equal to 40 at a phase angle of minus 120.1 degrees volts. That's the phasor voltage across this resistor, which I've just calculated using standard circuit analysis. There's the magnitude. And so therefore, what we get is that the power of the 100 ohm resistor is simply going to be equal to 41 squared, the voltage phasor magnitude, divided by 2 times 100, which will be equal to 8.4 watts. And therefore, the power of Z sub L of the entire load is also equal to 8.4 watts because we know that the average power of the capacitor and inductor must be equal to zero. So, for any complex impedance, and hopefully this should be kind of obvious to you, but for any complex impedance, the power of that complex impedance must simply be equal to the sum of the power of all of the resistors in that impedance. So if I'd had additional resistors in this load, I would simply have calculated the voltage phasor or current phasor for each of them and then simply added together all of the real powers and that would have given me my answer, the total real power of that complex impedance or that load. So in a nutshell, that's how we're going to go through and calculate this. All you have to do is find the phasor voltage or current for a resistor. Plug it into this and then you have the real power being dissipated by that resistor. Pretty straightforward. So, we'll look at this. You have a couple of problems to work on that. And now let's go and let's look at something that we never really touched upon, but it's time to discuss it. And that is maximum power transfer. Only now we're going to discuss it in an AC circuit. We'll look at that next time.